<laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing another another of this list. I mean, um, about four years ago, I made a top 10 anime waifus with China's gazungas. And recently, last week, I've discussed my story. In my story, the j the journey to degeneracy that I went through in my life. And that's actually a really fantastic uh, story because it also highlighted how I got into anime as well. Now, let's dive in more into that fully to the 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 degen part and list all of my top five anime waifus with giant with gigantic ass melons. Now I made plenty of top ten anime waifu lists on my channel already, but never top five. But this time this is a definitive definitive type thinking with our D here. That narrows it down to only top five. With that being said, this top five is based on my little pickle. If your little pickle disagree or I miss someone, please let me know in the comment section below. And dump in the comment section below, you guys, who are your favorite waifus with giant ass melons. And let's get this good discussion going. If Furthermore, if you do enjoy my content, I do a lot of anime discussion, top 5, top 10, every Mondays and playthrough, every Fridays. So please do leave a like and subscribe and check out all of my content down below without further ado, you guys. Let's get started with number 5. Mio Ferenji from Kenichi, the history's mightiest disciple. I mean, the first, I actually recently got into this two years ago, because I've read a lot of comments from Ryan Cafe and Knox and Briggs talk about this series. I ch check it out it's really a good underdog story. I do you know me I love my black clothes I love my underdog protagonist series I love my Astas my Naruto's my Deku's underdog journey and overall history Kenichi the history is my this disciple is one of my favorite recent anime that I've watched recent manga that I've Read. Plus, the manga has some schmexy scene with Shigure and uh, Mio as well. And Mio in general, like Mio is not by all means like a damsel in distress. She's actually, she's actually one of the strongest character in the series. And the story revolves around Kenichi catching up to Mio, Mio's strength, fighting alongside him and if, alongside her, and eventually protect being strong enough to protect her as well so for me Mio the fact that he's just not uh, a damsel in this church just a strong character on, in the series and the main character of the series is striving to protect her to catch up with her like she's like the end goal for the main character just made her for me one of Shonen's best anime wives and plus She's really gorgeous as well. Like, damn, girl, damn. Like, Kenichi's journey is totally worthy with her, with her by his side. And spoiler alert, she did end up by his side as well. So, yes, number five on the list is Mia Ferengi from Kenichi's History's Mightiest Disciple. Without further ado, let's proceed to number four. number. Four on the list is Hestia from Denmachi or is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon which is a title that is very misleading because Bal actually never pick up a girl in a dungeon except for that one monster girl but that's besides the point Hestia at the other end Hestia is the one who recognizes Bal who supports Bal all the way through who sims for Bal despite the fact that his or she's I keep referring to the wrong pronouns there. She's a virgin goddess and they will never be together. Like, legit, if they will be together, her title as the virgin goddess will literally disappear, which makes her powerless at that point. So, yeah, that's a forbidden kind of thing, but regardless, Sestia is still the fact that she was the only goddess who recognizes Bell at this very low point of his life and make a man out of him. 
Like that alone for me makes her one of the best waifu in that series as well. Like you have to protect Cassia, my dude. Like one of the greatest, the best girl in that series, and you have to just take care of her. I mean, she's literally the one who made a big deal out out of you. So yes, Cassia for supporting Belle and for having that beautiful, gorgeous bod. Lancer at number number four. And this list. Without further ado, let's proceed into number three. Number three on my list is Mira Jane Strauss from Fairy Tale. I've I've talked a lot about Lucy Hartelia in a discussion video or Urza Scarlet in different top ten lists in my YouTube channel and never actually addresses the third or the most beautiful woman in Fairy Tale, which is Mira Jane Strauss. The Boa, I think. She's like the Boa Hancock equivalent of Fairy Tale. And what what do I have to say about about this physical appearance? Pretty sexy. Over ten out of ten in the design department. Yes, a real tearjerker of a of a backstory. Sweet, kind kind of character. Beautiful kind of character. Strong, really strong and badass. Every time he. He, she goes in the fight mode. In the fight mode, it's always real badass. It's a good freaking badass moment. And hot, a little bit of a hot take. Mira Jane. About Mira Jane's backstory, I feel like Mira Jane's backstory just ruins by the fact that Lisana was alive. Like it could have been a thing that Lisana should not have been brought back to life. Like after Adelaide. But that's just beside the point because I kind of think that would have been a better, she would have been better off dead than alive because it helped, it helped for Elfman and Elfman and Mira Jane's character growth. So for me, hot take, Lisana is better off dead than alive because she ruins the character arc for both her, bro her brother and her sister. So yeah, that's just a little bit of a hitch on Mira Jane's character development it just hinders the fact it, it just hinders his character development the fact that well Lisana is still alive so yeah that's my little hot take but if uh, other than that Mira Jane is one of my favorite goated waifus of fairy tale without further ado let's proceed it to number two so where were we oh yeah number two number two I mean, I I own uh, booby mouse pad of her. I have out of all the straw hats, she has like w she is like one of the, my most collectible get of character two anime figures. Over, I mean, you got you got that bit. I do love my Nami, despite the fact that I never actually continued on my straw hat discussion. I kind of stopped. My last distraught discussion was Sanji. I was planning on doing a Nami discussion, but did, did not end up doing it because pro procrastination is a bitch. But regardless, a little bit of a discussion about Nami. Why I love Nami. I mean, I'll, I was already in love with Nami the moment she, she got introduced in the anime. Like, the fact that she sneaked up aboard on that luxury cruise ship to steal some money, to steal. A lot of treasure and the way she sneaks on sneaks up on buggy the way she fights from the moment she was introduced i mean i'm, I'm straight up simping at this point and then our long park arc happened in which made me fall in love and respect nami as a character way more the fact that she's not this powerful powerful character in one piece she's not even one of the mid strength, mid power level kind of strength within the straw hat. She's like one of the she's like one of the weakest trio of the straw hat crew. And yet her character arc from beginning to end was like breathtaking, made me respect the character even more. It, that scene when Luffy put his straw hat on Nami's head made me respect Nami more because he, she knows she's not strong enough to take on the Fishman Pirates, the Arlong Pirates, and yet she, but she has her, 
Luffy for help. Oh my goodness, I can't speak. So yeah. And that moment just remains in my heart. And why I love Nami. She's also quite intelligent. One of the intellectual types on, on the straw hat. Tactical types within the straw hat. So yes. Overall. Nami is remaining on my number two spot on the list. Which is go really goated goated character within the strats within one piece without further ado let's proceed into number one number one rias grammary from high school dex dude did i say more did i say more i mean she has giant as melons for one thing i mean she supports the main character she's a real badass strong character in the world of high school dxd she's like this princess kind of character yet so still supports her family, really supportive type of character within and then um, she has a really cute sweet side on her, real badass side. I mean, one of my favorite fights in high school DXD, believe it or not, was that Issei versus Ries fight in the dimensional gap back in season three. And that still remains to be one of my most powerful fight in high school DXD. Simply because Issei finally let Rias know how he felt about her and how she she he finally had a, has a clue of how she felt about them so without further ado number one Rias and also that whole interaction that dimensional got kind of like voided because null voided because well the dragon of the DD dragon made them forget anyway so regardless still a really powerful scene from both sides without further ado that will be my number one uh anime waifu with big melons now if you disagree please let me know in the comment section below and let's get this discussion going.